is up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to the channel i'm gold pony as you new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2022 honda ridgeline courtesy of younger nissan in frederick maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so yeah somebody traded a 22 ridgeline in for a new nissan so that is how we have this one today but today wanted to check this one out because of course you got honda's reputation for incredible reliability you also have a new color option for 2022 as well and all-wheel drive comes standard actually believe it or not so in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said that what you guys say let's just go ahead and get started with pricing and so as you can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the 2022 ridgeline first one being the sport which is the one we have today starting at $38,140 rtl for $41,120 rtl E for $44,070. Lastly, the black edition for $45,570. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the new Ridgeline is going to be the same. Powering the beast is a 3.5 liter direct injected V6, putting out 280 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 262 pound feet of torque, coming in at 4,700 RPM. Power sent to all four wheels through a nine speed automatic with paddle shifters, which you guys know we will be testing out here in a little bit. Zero to 60 times coming in at a very impressive 6.2 seconds and we're going to be giving that a shot as well redline 6900 rpm mpg numbers coming in 18 in the city 24 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel so before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter or acceleration test here in our ridge line i wanted to mention to you guys the drive modes that drive mode button is located directly behind that d or s button that's going to be your drive button of course but drive modes will include normal snow mud and sand adjusting things like the throttle response the shift points the traction control settings and the all-wheel drive system engagement as well and so a little fun fact regarding those drive modes when honda was engineering them they actually tested this out in the sands of dubai in the moscow mud and minnesota snow as well and so i don't know what's different about the minnesota snow as opposed to the maryland or pennsylvania snow that i'm used to but still minnesota snow so that's pretty cool but anyways having now gotten all that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find it straight away let's put the ridge line here to the test i'm going to push the s button one more time that's going to give me a kind of a sport driving mode it did immediately downshift holding the rpms in a much higher level giving me more power on demand and let's test out the acceleration and paddle shifters here all at once and let's see how quickly we can get our new ridge line here up to speed all right from a standstill in manual shift mode in three two one quick there's a delay okay there's a delay to the paddle shifters but dang this thing is quick for a truck i will definitely tell you that you're not going to have any issues with merging onto the highway but having said that i wouldn't have minded if the paddle shifters just reacted a little bit better but i'm still glad that they're there the reason being is because when it does snow in minnesota or maryland what you can do when you're going down a hill is rather than actually hitting the brakes and risk sliding off the road, you can actually use the paddle shifters to downshift do a little bit of engine braking so you're less likely to slide off the road when you brake that way. So that is what I would use them for, not so much for the actual shifting through the gears. And again, this thing is plenty quick. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 12.6 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 13 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, it's going to come in at 128 feet, which isn't that bad. It's pretty much as expected. As far as braking feel goes, it's actually excellent. I don't mind. It's on the firmer side of things, which kind of surprised me because typically with trucks, you don't get that. Take, for example, the Toyota Tacoma. Recently, I just reviewed that one. That braking 60 to zero distance came in 143 feet, which is the worst I've ever tested. And that's an extremely soft braking feel. So the fact that this is a firm braking feel and the 60 to zero is 128 feet, that's dang impressive, honestly this braking feel is perfectly fine in the ridge line without a doubt then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars as far as ride quality goes it's been perfectly fine honestly i've had no issues whatsoever in my short little test drive here today so that is certainly on point as far as steering feel goes honda always crushes it with this steering feel it's definitely on the heavier side of 
thing's not quite as heavy as if you're driving a Mazda or a, Do or a Dodge Challenger or a Ford Mustang or something like that, but definitely it's perfect for the Ridge line and what it is. Then touching on cabin noise, I'm going 24 miles per hour, but cabin noise is definitely subdued as well. And actually, although we don't have it today, if you were to go with the RTL trim level and up, you're actually gonna get an acoustic laminated front windshield, which is definitely going to assist with an even more serene cabin at that. But again, we have the Sport, so we don't even have that, and cabin noise is still 100% on point, so no issues there either. And touching on visibility, I could see 100% perfectly fine out the back. This is a truck, of course, you're not gonna have any issues there, but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of a brand new 2022 Honda Ridgeline. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2022 Honda Ridgeline, as you can clearly see in the upper corner of the windshield. It is a 2022, but anyways, let me first touch on the new paint color for the 2022 model year, and that is going to be Sonic Gray Pearl. If that sounds familiar, yes, Honda has used that paint color on other models that it currently has, so that is what that is going to look like. But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front. Of course, you will find a gloss black front grille that comes standard with the gloss black kind of accent tying together the two headlights as well. You do have that sport trim badging found in the front grill to go along with it. To the sides though, check this out, LED headlights coming standard for all trim levels across the board. And they're not just regular LED headlights, they're LED projector headlights. The added illumination there as opposed to just your regular LED headlights. So love that. LED daytime running lights also coming standard automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark at night, these headlights will turn on automatically for you there. Automatic high beams, if you wanted them, that is going to come on the RTLE and black edition trim levels. So we don't have those today, but LED fog lights also coming standard for all trim levels across the board. You guys can see that down below there. And in case anybody was curious about the ground clearance on the new Ridgeline, that is going to come in at 7.6 inch so kind of similar to an SUV more or less, but that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so but now since we are around to the side of the Ridgeline, gloss black window surrounds will come standard. Do you have some matte black side skirts as well, of course. Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors, unless you go with the Sport, and then you got gloss black side mirrors. You guys, of course, are currently looking at right now. If you were to go with the RTL trim level and up, that is going to add to those side mirrors, heated side mirrors with integrated turn signals and memory settings actually as well so those are the trims you're going to have to go with for that take a look at the door handles they are body colored for all trim levels but the rtle because the rtle is going to give you chrome door handles then then take a look down at the wheel configuration 18 inch alloys coming standard for all trim levels across the board of course varying in design and I actually like the look of the wheels a lot on this ridge line that we have here today but sorry about the plane there but that pretty much rounds out the side profile here let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of the ridge line all right so now since we are around to the back of this one you guys can see there is some gloss black accents kind of found on the uh, top portion and the sides there of the back end you will find an integrated brake light just above the window there there is a body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top there if you guys can see that led tail lights coming standard for every single trim level across the board gotta love that as well you got some sport trim level badging found on the rear tailgate there along with all-wheel drive badging because again all trim levels come standard with all-wheel drive as far as the towing capacity goes you guys can see that tow hitch back there it's going to come in at 5,000 pounds even in case anybody was curious and just below it all there are dual exhaust outlets the exhaust looks so dang good on the ridge line dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip And so, but now since we are around back of the ridge line, there's actually a couple different cool ways to go ahead and open that rear tailgate. Of course, you have that normal truckway where it simply just folds down, but it is actually a dual action tailgate is what Honda calls it, meaning it actually swings open from the passenger side to the left as well. So that is pretty cool if you have maybe a object that you wanted to push back a little bit further into the bed you can swing it open to the side and that allows you to do that so i like that they put that feature on this thing but as far as the truck bed length goes it's going to come in 
at 64 inches and then if you were to fold down that rear tailgate that is going to come in at 83 inches and in case anybody was curious yes honda says a 4x8 sheet of plywood will fit in that rear bed area so in case anybody's curious about that in bed storage that is another really awesome feature about the ridge line you can actually open up the bed and within that you're going to find your spare tire of course but you can also find 7.3 cubic feet of in bed storage and this can serve as a place to just simply store things or it could serve as a cooler because there is a drain plug at the very bottom of that in-floor storage so if you threw a bunch of ice and drinks back there for maybe some tailgating you got a portable cooler in the back of your ridge line and then when everything melts if it's super hot out just pull the drain plug and it automatically just pours out onto the ground below you so that is pretty darn cool i love that they would also mention that there is a truck bed sound system for the rtl e and black edition i remember testing that in the past it's actually pretty darn loud so another little tailgating feature there if you wanted to go that route that's pretty cool and of course you have some tie down cleats back there you got bed lighting for all trim levels but i will say if you go with the rtle or black edition you're going to get led bed lighting so if you wanted leds those are the two trims to go ahead and go with but anyways let's now go ahead and make our way up to the rear legroom that's going to come in at 36.7 inches so for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i had back there so plenty of room for me and those rear seats are 60 40 split lift up rear seats so you can actually lift them up if you wanted to add some extra space if you had a mastiff or a great dane that wanted to stretch out its legs back there that is one option you can go ahead and take advantage of there is rear ventilation that comes standard along with a bunch of storage areas just below that and of course you do have a rear center armrest with cup holders and actually a little bit of storage within that center armrest there as well but that pretty much rounds out the back seats let's now go ahead and make our way to the front seats and so manually adjustable cloth seats are going to come standard in our sport trim level that we have here today but if you go with the rtl trim level and up you're going to get a 10-way power driver's seat with four-way power lumbar four-way power passenger seat leather seating and heated front seats and again that's for rtl trim level and up all of those trims are going to get that but overall as far as seat comfort goes it's fine it's nothing really crazy but it'll definitely get the job done i honestly haven't had any issues with seat comfort and this steering wheel did telescope out pretty far so that definitely helped with finding my perfect driving position and so speaking of let's go ahead and touch on the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping and like i said it does telescope out plenty far it is leather wrapped for the rtl trim level and up otherwise you're going to get it wrapped in urethane like you're currently looking at and it will be heated for the rtl e and black edition trims if you wanted that but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you got your honda logo on the one side then when you flip it over lock unlock and that circle with the hold button that's going to be your remote start which actually comes standard on every single trim level surprisingly so gotta love that but ultimately it is a push button start with keyless entry for every single trim level across the board so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot in the brake and press that bright red engine start button located just to the left of the climate control settings there. And so once started up, tachometer is all the way to your left. There is a digital display front and center. Got your engine temp and fuel information all the way to your right. And then your digital speedometer is going to be located all the way to the top. And of course, there are plenty of different settings you can control within that digital display. For example, those off-road driving modes I was rambling off to you guys earlier. You can see that within the digital display. There's how many miles you have left until you hit empty there's your outside temperature trip a trip b when you need your next oil change the list goes on so pretty much everything you could possibly want within the digital portion of the gauges there then make our way to overall interior quality a power moonroof is going to come on the rtl trim level and up overhead sunglass holder though coming standard with every single trim level across the board i love that tri-zone climate control coming standard with every single trim level across the board as well definitely a big fan of that and actually home link controls every single trim level yet again i specify it like that because a lot of times home link controls only come standard in top trim levels of other manufacturers but with the ridge line at least it comes standard even on our sport trim level so 100 percent and that's up to three different garage doors found just behind the overhead sunglass holder by the way in case you were curious about that auto dimming rear view mirror for the rtl trim level and up ambient led lighting for the rtl e and black edition the rtl e is going to give you blue ambient lighting and the black edition is going to give you red 
head. So in case anyone was curious about that, if you wanted a wireless phone charger, it's gonna come on the RTLE trim level and black edition then if you wanted to go that route. And so just in front of those drive buttons, you can find a 12 volt power outlet, USB charging port, and some nice rubberized storage to probably put your cell phone there. You do have dual cup holders just to the right of all those buttons. And what I like best about all of the surrounds about all these buttons is that it's not just a standard matte gray finish. There's a texturized finish to it. So always harp on that in all my reviews. So I do kind of like the way Honda did that there. And then there's a ton, an absolute ton of storage just behind those cup holders. Another 12 volt power outlet, another USB charging port. And like I said, a ton of storage within that. But overall, it's pretty much finished more on the practical side of things. And that's kind of my way of saying there's nothing fancy about the interior quality. It'll certainly get the job done though. So I personally don't mind it. It's just pretty much as you would expect the Ridgeline to be finished. I'll put it that way. But so then take a look at the infotainment screen. Eight inch color touchscreen display does come standard. That comes with Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, factory navigation system coming with the RTLE and black edition trims. And of course you can check out your radio information up there. And so when it comes to the sound systems, you will find seven speed with 215 watts and a subwoofer with the Sport and RTL trim levels and then eight speakers with 540 watts and a subwoofer coming with the RTL E and black edition trims and so having now got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out this seven speaker sound system that we have with us here today <laughs> I don't know why when I hear Michael Jackson, I always think Rush Hour 2. Is that weird? I don't know. But anyways, you could tell there was a subwoofer in the ridge line, so I was definitely a fan of that. The bass was plenty fine, believe it or not. Actually, the clarity was pretty darn good as well. And typically what I find in trucks, because it's not that big of a space, the sound systems usually are plenty fine. So that was definitely the case with the ridge line. But anyways, last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the ridge line in reverse, you will find a rear view camera taking up the entire screen, which you don't always get. So I want to emphasize that. But also so three different views if you press the buttons at the bottom of the screen there. And that, of course, is going to let you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, front side side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're going to have latch, a.k.a. lower anchors to tethers to children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, actually, for all trim levels will be Honda Sensing. This includes a collision mitigation braking system, road departure mitigation system, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, four collision warning, and lane departure warning then as well and in addition to that if you were to go with the rtl trim level and up that is going to add to that a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert and so when it comes to my final thoughts here of the ridge line in bed storage is absolutely wonderful i love that feature in the ridge line i believe they pioneered that as well the first people to do it so huge fan of that dual action tailgate i can see where that is going to be completely useful as well again if you want to shove something back a little bit further in the bed if you have that traditional fold down bed it's going to be a lot more difficult to do than if the tailgate actually swung open to the side so i like that i do love the truck bed sound system although we don't have it today but I'm definitely a fan of that as well you got legendary honda reliability as well you guys could check out a consumer reports magazine to substantiate that as far as room for improvement goes the towing capacity on the ridge line is just so so as far as trucks go at least there's competitors that certainly will tow more than the ridge line so i wanted to mention that there are some other trucks of course that are a little more capable off-road and my last thing is i wouldn't have minded if the ridge line included a full digital gauge cluster i think that would look pretty darn good and add some customization to the ridge line here as well but let me know what you guys think of the ridge line in the comment section below that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i'll see you guys all in the next video stay gold